friends, this video on thermal properties of matter, part 18, is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 17 before going ahead with part 18. Now let us again look at certain problems. The problem states that a copper block of mass 2.5 kg is heated in a furnace to a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and then placed on a large ice block. What is the maximum amount of ice that can make it? So initially the copper block was heated and then that heated copper block was placed on ice. That means initially the transfer of heat took place in such a way that the copper block gained temperature. Temperature increased for the copper block. After that when it was placed with ice then transfer of heat started taking place from copper block to the ice block, right? So initially, so here what is given? Mass of the copper block is 2.5 kgs, which is 2500 grams. Change in temperature is 500 degrees Celsius in the initial stage. In the initial scenario, when the copper block is just kept on a heated furnace. What is the specific heat of copper? Specific heat of copper is 0 0.39 joule per gram per Kelvin. So, what is the maximum amount of heat that the copper block can lose? Now, when the copper block, let us suppose the copper block is placed over ice block. Right? So, transfer of heat will take place from copper block to ice block, right? From copper block to ice block, heat transfer will take place. Now, how much heat can this copper block lose? That means in this case, copper block will lose heat and ice block will gain heat. But the question is, how much heat can the copper block lose? The amount of heat which the copper block will gain when it is heated in a furnace is the amount of heat that it can lose, right? It cannot lose more than that. So the amount of heat, so the maximum heat which copper block can lose will be equal to M into SC into delta T. This is the amount of heat that it can lose because this is the heat that it would have gained when it was heated on the furnace. So this will be equal to 2500 into 0 0.39 into 500. So this is equal to 4875 Zero, zero joules. So this much amount of heat the copper block can lose. Now the amount of heat which is lost by the copper block is the amount of heat that is gained by the ice block. <coughs> now let us suppose that M1 is the amount of ice that mel melts when copper block is placed. So let us suppose M1 is the amount of ice that melts. So we can say that Q that let us suppose if this heat is Q then we can say that Q is equal to mass into latent heat right. What is this latent heat? This latent is it. heat is latent heat of fusion. So we can say that M will be equal to Q divided by L. So we can say this will be equal to 4875 Zero, 00 divided by L is 335. So this comes out to be 1.45 kgs. So this is the amount of ice that can melt. So what did we do? Here we saw that the copper block was first heated so that it can gain some heat. Then it was placed on an ice block so that it can release that amount of heat and the ice block can gain that heat. The ice block gains that heat and that heat is used up in converting the ice block from solid state to liquid state. So the maximum heat that the copper block can lose is M into SC into delta T. So we get the amount of heat. This amount of heat is used 
to convert the ice into water. So we can say Q is equal to M into L and from there we can calculate the value of M that is the amount of ice that can melt. Let's look at another problem. The problem states in an experiment on the specific heat of a metal a 0 0.20 kg block of the metal at 150 degrees Celsius is dropped in a copper calorimeter of water equivalent 0 0.025 kg containing 150 centimeter cube of water at 27 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. Compute the specific heat of metal. So this problem is also on the same lines that heat lost by one body is equal to heat gained by other body. In this case what happens, initially we have a block of metal, then that block of metal is dropped in a calorie meter which contains water, right? Now the final temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, that means the heat in this case if you see that the metal block is at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and the water which was there in the calorie meter is at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. That means when that metal block is dropped in the calorie meter, transfer of heat will take place from the metal block to the water. So transfer of heat will take place from metal block to water. What is this water? Water is basically water plus calorie meter system. So this is how the heat transfer will take place. That means the heat lost by the metal should be equal to the heat gained by the water plus calorie meter system. Right? Now let us look at metal first. For the metal, mass is equal to 0 0.20 kg which is equal to 200 grams. Initial temperature for the metal was 150 degree Celsius and what is the final temperature? Final temperature of this system is 40 degree Celsius. So this is 40 degree Celsius. So what would be the change in temperature? Delta T will be equal to 110 degree Celsius. So what will be the heat lost by the metal? Heat lost by the metal would be equal to M into C into delta T. Now let us look at the water plus calorie meter system. For the water calorie meter system, what is the mass of water? Mass of water will be equal to it, it gives the density, it gives the volume of water. So mass will be equal to density into volume. We know that density of water is 1 kg per meter cube. So this will be 1 into 150 which is 150 grams. So this would be the mass of water. Now what is the specific heat of water? Specific heat of water is 4.186 joule per gram per Kelvin. And what is the change in temperature? Final temperature is 40 and the initial temperature is 27. Therefore, the change in temperature is 13 degree Celsius. Now, if you look at this, what would be the total mass of this system? The total mass for this system will be mass of water plus mass of calorie meter. So, this will be equal to 150 grams plus 25 grams. This 0 0.025 kg is converted into grams. Now we can say that the heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained by water calorimeter system. So what would be the heat gained by this system? Heat gained by water calorie meter system would be M2 into Cw into delta T. So now we will equate both of them. So what do we get? Let us say we call it delta T2. So we get therefore, so we can say that 
the heat gained by the first system that is m into c into delta t is equal to that is heat lost by the first system is equal to the heat gained by the second system so for the second system let us suppose this is m2 into cw into delta t2 now we will replace the values so we get 200 into c into delta t is equal to m2 is 150 plus 25 into 4.186 into 30. So from this we get c is equal to 175 into 4.186 into 30 divided by 200 into 110. So this comes out to be 0 0.437 joule per gram per Kelvin. So this is the value of specific heat of the metal. So this is the specific heat of the metal. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.